Hey guys, it's Karen here from Arden Cove and I recently did a video about how to travel when you're stuck at home or a bunch of different ways to travel virtually and I thought it would be really fun to try out a bunch of those ideas and take you guys along with me. So I decided that the travel day is tomorrow. It's not today because there's a couple things that I should do before taking a trip and I'm gonna do those today and take you guys along with me and then tomorrow will be the big day. I don't know where I'm traveling to yet. So the first thing I want to do is figure out where to go and instead of picking something off of a wish list, I'm gonna try to find a randomizer or a quiz to figure out where to go. I want somewhere that I haven't been before but I also want somewhere that uh, maybe I wouldn't pick for myself. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to look for a quiz or a randomizer and go from there. So let's figure it out. I guess I'll just pick the first thing. <laughs> this is the Trouble Channel and they have a little... I don't... I guess this is not working. I'm gonna take the next one. Start. What kind of packer am I? So I'd rather have... I only bring the essentials. I think I'm kind of already guessing which dish is which area and I'm gonna go for somewhere that I've never been before. I'm gonna go for steak and kidney pie because it sounds like somewhere in Europe. The final question. Are you a good swimmer? Mm. Yes. <gasps> Sweden! I should travel to Sweden! Oh this is really exciting actually. I probably wouldn't have picked it for myself, but I'm actually really excited for this because I think it's going to be really good. I'm so excited about this. This is a really good idea. So now that we have the destination, let's start planning our trip. So it's been a couple hours now. I've just been doing some work, but also doing a little bit of research. I found a couple of different dishes that I'm going to try to make. I also just need to get like regular groceries, but you know. So I have to venture out into the real world. I'm not quite sure how many of these ingredients I'll be able to find. I'm going to try to find things that are accurate. And if not, if I can't find it, I'm just going to use something kind of similar or make do with what I already have. This is what I'm bringing with me, the Carmel backpack. It is raining, so I, it's good that it's waterproof. I have a face mask in here, hand sanitizer. Ah, I can't reach it. I also have these like alcohol wet wipes that I thought might be useful if I need to wipe down the grocery cart or um, basket while shopping. I might use them to also wipe our apartment's doorknobs just in case I have my keys. That's pretty much it. I don't need a ton of things and my wallet is in the front. Okay, I am back. It was raining so get a waterproof bag you guys. Here's all the groceries I got. Good morning everyone. So my morning started off pretty basic, ordinary, <laughs> normal. However, I did decide to follow this makeup tutorial. Okay, women are known for their natural and minimalistic beauty routines, and the mindset of less is more is now spreading to the whole world. The creator actually lives in Korea, I found out, but she does talk about more Scandinavian makeup trends in the video. Mostly that it's very simple and effortless looking, and looks very natural, almost like those no makeup makeup looks that you see all over YouTube. <sighs> I thought the final result was really nice, it was simple and pretty without looking too overdone and I really liked the final look. For clothing, I read that the Scandinavian wardrobe is often monochromatic or a neutral color palette but also with more 
boxy or like straight lines things should look simple and clean and minimalist i went with this dress from uniqlo which has more of a straight cut but it's still like stretchy and very comfortable i also threw on this cardigan in case it was cold but i felt like it really fit all of the criteria and definitely stay home worthy clothing first meal of the day breakfast so for my research it seems like a lot of swedish people eat quite plain tasting breakfast like toast with butter oatmeal um cereal stuff like that apparently there's copious amounts of coffee and milk involved personally i am lactose intolerant and i don't typically have a coffee drinking habit but i think i'll drink a strongly brewed cup of tea and i decided to go with Musli for breakfast. So this is actually musli made Swedish style, which means last night I cored and grated up an apple. I added some yogurt and musli into this bowl, mixed it up and left it in the fridge overnight. It's very, very easy to make. It tastes like applesauce plus yogurt, but there's little bits of oats and um, I think raisins and almonds to chew on, so it's much more filling than just plain applesauce, I guess. Mm. I think there's little nuts in it too. It feels like this will be a really filling and satisfying meal to start the day. Cheers. like the Swedish style cinnamon bun but then there was no yeast <laughs> so I just bought that. I really enjoyed my fika with my sister. We sometimes chat throughout the day but we never really video call or talk on the phone so it was kind of nice to try something new and have a very delicious pastry at the same time. Whenever I'm traveling to a new place it's kind of nice to learn a few phrases in their language. I know I'm not going to become fluent by any means, but it's really nice to learn a few phrases hey. just hey. to sort of get myself acquainted with some commonly used ones. And I find that people will really appreciate just a little bit of effort on our part, as opposed to expecting everyone to know English. That's not the case in a lot of countries. Oh. 10 words. <sighs> Here's the book that I mentioned earlier. I've been listening to it throughout the day and, and really trying to incorporate a lot of the practices they mention in this day. La Gome is all about just the right amount, like having a perfect balance of work and home life, of leisure and play. So it was really cool to learn some more about the Swedish lifestyle. It's written by an American woman who married a Swedish man and now lives there and is raising her children there. So it's really cool to hear about her life and kind of things that she's learned about Swedish culture and how it's different. And yeah, I just try to incorporate some of the things that they mentioned in the book, including tidying up and keeping your space free of clutter and tidy and adding decor pieces that are sort of simple but make, you know, a simple statement that is really beautiful. And it does feel great to tidy up and refresh your space, especially when you're staying in all the time. 
on to making lunch now i definitely felt like i cooked a lot today because i was you know making everything from scratch but also i am such a glutton i wanted to try everything so i picked out quite a few recipes to try for lunch i went with a super classic swedish dish at least from my impression of reading about sweden and talking to my friends I'm kind of curious if you guys can guess what I'm making. For lunch, we probably have one of the most famous Swedish meals. This is um, my interpretation of a smorgasbord. Smorgasbord? I don't know if that's how you say it. But it's generally served buffet style, usually not eaten by myself, but we're working with what we got. So usually it's buffet style, a bunch of small dishes and you can pick and choose what you want. And smorgish is basically open face sandwiches, rye bread as well as some rye sourdough um, crispy breads, I think they're called. This, these are actually Finnish, but I think they're pretty similar. We also have um, some hard-boiled eggs, meatballs, not really Swedish meatballs, but that's what I had. Um, some small shrimp. Here I have some smoked salmon, butter, dill marinated cucumbers. This one here is some pickled herring, which is um, something I definitely tried to find for this video because it's quite um, the staple in Swedish food, apparently. I have some pickled beets. I tried to find Swedish cheese at my supermarket, but didn't really find any. So I picked up this one, which is actually Norwegian, and it's kind of like a cream cheese spread type of thing. And this is just cheese I already had. I also have a little bit of mayonnaise right here. Another thing that's quite typical is lingonberry. Um, I didn't have any, so I'm going to just use some strawberry jam. Or actually, this is raspberry jam. So apparently there's a very specific way to eat a smorgasbord, and that is to eat it in multiple rounds because it is buffet style. You go back and get more. So traditionally, the first round is pickled herring, hard-boiled egg, and hard cheeses, which I do not have. The second round will have some more seafood dishes like gravlax, um, pike pate, caviar, and crawfish. The third round has a variety of charcuteries, pickles, and salads. The fourth round has warm dishes like meatballs, sausages, and gratins. And then the final round is sweets. Maybe I'll put some of this cheese and a little bit of that pickled herring. I have no idea if this is how you're supposed to eat it. <laughs> Maybe I'll put a cucumber just to like keep it fresh. Mm. Mm. I actually really like that. Mm. This bread not too much flavor on it, which makes it perfect base for all these other ingredients. The pickled herring is um, a little bit tart, um, a little sweet, but not overly fishy or anything too crazy. I really enjoyed lunch. It was a great variety of different things and trying different combinations of things. I tried to remember um, different recipes that I looked up for open face sandwiches and putting things together. I thought it was really fun to have everything laid out and then you have to build your own sandwiches because it forces you to be very deliberate about what you want to do and how you construct your sandwich. I think it would be even more fun if I was eating with a bunch of people. I can definitely see the appeal of that during this. Probably should have taken a picture before I started eating. <laughs> So it's now the afternoon. I made myself a cup of instant latte. I said I didn't buy coffee. I do have instant latte. I just don't have coffee beans to brew coffee. I even like watched videos on how to make coping coffee. Go cup, cope, 
coca coffee where they make coffee brewed with a stovetop kettle. I kind of forgot to buy it in the grocery store, but I think it's for the better because otherwise I probably would have wasted it. But anyways, in the spirit of a coffee break, I thought I would get a little bit of coffee in me. And there is a lot of milk in there and apparently there's a lot of milk consumption in Sweden. Right now I'm going to take a little bit of a break to digest, get some work done, and I'll be back to explore a little bit of Sweden with you guys. later in the afternoon and I want to go for a walk. Let's explore a little bit. So I'm going to start off with a very basic search about Sweden. One of the things I love to do is look at the map and situate ourselves. So Sweden is right in between Norway and Finland. The capital is right here, Stockholm. Ooh, look at how beautiful that water is. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I love these buildings, like the colorful buildings. They have so much character. So because it's a bunch of islands, you see there's a lot of water, a lot of bridges. Ooh, these are so pretty. I love looking at photos. <gasps> I love going to farmer markets. I don't know about you guys, but I love going to farmer markets when I am visiting somewhere just to like try the local fruits, get some local um, jams or cheese and butter and eggs uh, and the flowers are so pretty. I like the signage on this building it's just like pub. Like I like how colorful this is. You see like there's not just the black roofs but also green and red and these bright yellow and orange walls. It looks really cool. Stockholm has 14 islands and more than 50 bridges. That's more than like three bridges per island. That's 3.5 at least bridges per island. That's insane. That's a lot of bridges. I think we've already looked at a couple photos of the old town, but I want to take a look at where the, the cathedral is because that might be interesting. Ooh, there's a lot of information right there. Let's go into street view so we could take a look. I'm not sure if this is the front or this is the right. This is probably the front because you, you know, you walk into the church, right? Huh? Is this the front? I'm, I'm not sure. Or is it around the corner? Let's take a look. I like street view because you could just do this and walk around. Ooh. This is the side of the church. Uh, we can continue our little jaunt around the church though. A very leisurely walk as you're going Oh, maybe this is the front. This looks definitely like the front. Obviously with all the people standing in front of it. Who is this guy? Can we like zoom in a little bit? Ooh. Time to practice my 10 words of Swedish that I know. Hello, Gustavi. He's probably not Gustavi. Okay, I'm ready to head inside. Ooh, this is beautiful. Look at these beautiful archways and like these brick pillars are quite cool. You don't see that as, or I don't know, maybe it's very popular in Sweden. Usually you see old churches in old parts of the city, pretty close to the center. Also probably close to some sort of palace. Oh yeah, the royal palace is right next door. There you go. Um, I love looking at how old towns are set up. Looks like it's under some construction. Oh wow, look at this. That's a nice chair, isn't it? Like, this looks like a really cute little island with half park, half parliament house. This is such a cool building. So this is the parliament house and there's like one section that looks really old, but then it has like this, looks like a a later add-on and then you have this super modern add-on I love the juxtaposition of the materials or like styles it looks really cool actually <laughs> I don't know if this is actually any newer than this circular part but it looks really cool all together 
So a lot of times museums don't allow photography inside, so even if you're just exploring on Google Maps, you might not see a lot of photos of things inside. But what we can do is go to Google Arts and Culture and see what they do have. Let's just type in Sweden. There is a whole piece about it. Oh, there you have our parliament, which we are already familiar with. We visited that one already. They have 17 collections. Let's take a little street art walking tour. So there's like video about street art being made. That's a really cool video actually. This one is inspired by surrounding influences, surrealism, and geometric shapes. Uh, one of the things I love doing when I'm traveling is to visit museums. I even have a bucket list of dream museums that I want to visit all around the world. Hopefully after this pandemic I'll be able to cross off a few more, but one day I'm going to travel to all of them and it'll be wondrous. But for now I I'm just exploring a few pages. I definitely recommend checking out Google Arts and Culture. This is a lot of fun. So on to dinner time. Again, I'm back in the kitchen whipping up a storm. Again, I picked an ambitious menu for dinner, so I am cooking a lot, but it was worth it because I got to try three new dishes and I love each and every one of them. They're so good. They might not be super accurate because I did have to use what I could find and have access to. I didn't want to go to five different grocery stores just to find a specific ingredient. But I would love to hear from you guys. If you're Swedish or if you've been to Sweden, what are some classic dishes that you love or think is really really delicious. I definitely want to try everything someday. One day I'll definitely try everything but for now I am cooking everything on my own. <laughs> Hours of cooking later I am finally done. I have a very lovely candle my friend made for me so I thought it'd be nice to have a little candlelight dinner. Here I have some Swedish cro croup Kakor, which is some potato dumplings filled with bacon and onions inside. Here I have some split pea soup, except instead of split peas, I used some red lentils because that is what I had in my pantry. They're both dried legumes, so I thought it would be an appropriate substitution. Here I have some Swedish pancakes because um, in my research, I found that this soup is a very popular pairing with pancakes for a dessert. And these are Swedish pancakes. They're very thin, um, quite similar to crepes, and it's served with butter as well as um, lingonberry jam. Um, because I don't have lingonberry jam, again, I did bring out my raspberry jam. And it would be typical to serve this dish with lingonberry as well. I also have some mustard to serve with the soup. So I'm pretty excited to try all of these out. I think I'm gonna start off with some... let's try some soup. They said to dollop some mustard on top. I don't know if this is the correct mustard, but it's the mustard I have. I did try a recipe with um, the still mustard sauce earlier today and it turned out really strange. I didn't end up using it in my lunch because I don't know what to do with it. It was very, very strong. So I'm gonna start with only a little bit of mustard. Oh, this is a really good soup. It's nice and savory. And I, th I can definitely see how that would be really filling from just for just a soup. Let's try one of these potatoes. So these are potato on the outside. And then inside is some cooked onion and bacon. You wrap the bacon and onion inside into a dumpling and you boil it. Um, at first they will sink and then once they're ready they will float. So that's how you know when to take it out. Hmm, it 
tastes good. The texture is definitely like a gnocchi, as you would expect because it is boiled potatoes with flour and an egg. I'm pretty sure I cooked it correctly because um, it was all floating when I took it out. But I don't know if I made the dough too thick or anything like that. Tastes pretty good. <laughs> Let me try it with some jam. My substitute lingonberry flavor. See how that tastes. Pretty good. <laughs> Let's try some of this pancake. Very excited about it. It's not a particularly sweet pancake, I think. Um, did I add any sugar to it? I think if I did add sugar, it was pretty small amount. Try it with some butter first. It definitely reminds me of a crepe. The instructions said to cook it pretty thin. Um, it's like kind of like an eggy crepe kind of taste, which I mean crepe is pretty eggy too, I think. Maybe. Have it with some jam now. Mm. Overall, I think these are very delicious and hearty meals. I did notice there tends to be a meat and potatoes kind of dinner, um, such as the potato dumplings, um, but also there's Swedish meatballs with mashed potatoes. I do wonder what kind of vegetables I should have added to this meal to round it out a little bit more. It does look a little bit funny being all white and brown, but I'm gonna enjoy my dinner. While I'm eating dinner, I'm gonna watch a movie. I found a Swedish movie called A Man Called Ove, Ove? and it's about like an angry old man who's isolated and retired um he's also mourning his late wife so <laughs> it starts off a little bit sad i think and then i think it's one of those stories where you form an unlikely friendship and he feels happier so i think in the end it'll be a feel, a feel good movie um but yeah i'm just gonna enjoy this movie and probably call it a night Overall, the day was super fun and exciting, but also relaxing. I think it was the perfect balance, the perfect lagom. I had such a great time. I hope you guys enjoyed following along. And let me know if there's anything that you want to try out yourself. Or if you want to plan out an entire day, where would you go? Are you going to go to Sweden? Are you going to go somewhere else? Or even if you are looking for something simple to switch up your routine, if you feel like you're stuck inside all the time and you want to shake things up, even trying a different breakfast or a new recipe or learning a new language could be a really fun way to do it. Again, I have another video all about the different ideas of what you can do. And if you are looking for a beautiful bag, please check out artandcove.com. We design beautifully made bags that are waterproof and anti-theft. You guys saw me going to the grocery store in the rain. I had my waterproof bag, so everything was perfectly safe and dry inside. If you want to check it out, head on over to artandcove.com. Hope you guys are staying safe and healthy, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!